Nini Sports Hot Topics, Hot Tweets, and the spiciest. Yeah, news. and if you're not sure how this works, I'm going to run it down for you. We're going to present all the goodies we've gathered, which we will discuss and probably argue. It is Lisa. But luckily for all of us, there is a mute button that I can uh, take away her voice for you guys. Oh, no, it's like the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys remember, we like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get right to it. Let's kick it off with our top stories uh, with the biggest news of the week, the Overwatch League's plans for the 2020 season. We've long known that the OWL will be city-based in its third season, and now we know how it will work. Teams have been divided into four divisions across two conferences, and each team will host a minimum of two homestand events in their city. All teams will play 28 matches, playing every other team at least once. No dates have been announced, but the season will run from February to August, as normally. Ah. So, Brody, uh, now that we have more details on how the mm -hmm. OWL will work next season, how do you think the league will go? I know you're such a huge fan of the Overwatch well, well, League. Hey, no, 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 here's the thing. <laughs> it's like, I talk, I talk crap on, on <laughs> the Overwatch. Like, watching Overwatch is terrible. It is a bad experience. I still play the game. It's mm -hmm. still a fun game to, yeah. you know, just goof around with your friends and that, but I just, I can't watch it competitively, but the Overwatch League itself, mm -hmm. I, I love a lot of the things they're doing with the structure. I just think it's the wrong game that they're doing with, right? So Listen, this I think this tale. is fantastic. You say this all the time, yeah. but it's because you're coming out from an outsider's perspective. Because I remember when I first started watching League, I didn't know what the hell was going on, but once you play more and no, you actually understand. I play the game and I enough, know though? if I actually sit down and watch, there were times when the players, I remember this one time in the Overwatch League where the players actually didn't even know what was happening. <laughs> there was some sort of like tie break thing or whatever, okay. and they had no idea what was going on. And right, like the commentators right. sometimes are confused. There's way too much going on. Yeah. But when it comes to the structure, yes. absolutely, I love it. And I, I want to see this with other games. Like, I know COD is, is starting to, to do yeah. their thing. And if they can start to take a lot away from this, I feel like COD is actually going to benefit from a structure like this more than the Overwatch League. I just think Overwatch is not a good spectator eSport okay. at, at all. But we're digressing. But the, That's not the main point of the story. <laughs> the what, structure is great, and I, was, I like it. I want yeah. divisions. It's it's really cool. When I was reading like how they actually broke down the teams, it's interesting because they broke it down by like regions, right? So yeah, there's like, Atlantic, yeah. North, and South, and then the West side, yep. there's also like East and West. They did, said that weird. But then the Asian teams as well are all grouped together. So it makes me wonder, will there be like, you know, all the good teams in one region and other teams are kind of have like a bypass because the weaker teams are all from the same yeah, and region. Then, and they get to the finals and just get straight Exactly, stomped. exactly. But that's kind of similar to basketball, right? We see that in basketball yeah, no, all the time. I, I think that's, NBA, I think that's great though it, because it starts creating a regional uh, bias that people yes. can get behind. So even if, so right now it's you cheer for your team, mm -hmm. right? But if, if your team doesn't make it and then, <sighs> but another team from your region is there, you're going to cheer for them. True. So it creates a bit more support for all the teams overall. So who are you cheering for? I'm, well, I think I have to cheer for Toronto. Oh, you have to. I have to, but. Okay. I'm still barely going to watch it, so let's move <laughs> on. Sticking with the Overwatch League, though, for another minute, the Vancouver Titans are ahead of the competition when it comes to reveals. They've announced the venue for their home game next season, and it's none other than the Rogers Arena. That's where the NHL's Vancouver Canucks play, and it seats 18,000 people. Lisa? 18,000? Do you think this may be a little ambitious for them? Do you think they can sell the seats? Are they going to close it off? That's a big venue. That's huge. That's 18, ambitious. Uh, a little context, like we know the season one uh, grand finals at the Barclay Center in New York, uh -huh. it was 20,000 people and they sold that out. But that's like the whole season. That's that like every season. Overwatch that, exactly. fan. That's the whole so season. So the fact that the Vancouver Titans think they can fill up 18,000 on their well, own. Well, considering that like some of the other ones is like 2,700, yeah, 8,100, like all the other homestands are like, like half, half yeah, of that, less, under half yeah. of that, right? Like even for, for ours, like our Rocket League World Finals, you know, we were at the um, Prudential Center where the Jerseys play, uh -huh. or Jersey Devils, <laughs> New Jersey the, Devils the play. Jerseys play. But, you know, they shut off the whole top row because okay. it, that's also 19,000 seats. You, it's really still hard to, to sell a whole venue, especially just for your home stands, right? Yeah. Like, that's, so that makes me think, like, are people going to travel? Maybe everyone from the West will go up to Vancouver for their home stands. I mean, if you take a flight, it's like 300 bucks, and if yeah. you drive, it's like 20 hours. So really dedicated fans might make yeah. the trip, but 18,000 seems like I have heavy, I have a, gr a good feeling challenge. that they're going to do kind of what, what happened at the RL Worlds, is where they're going to shut off some of You know, at, at yeah. concerts where they just have half the venue available, yeah. I feel like we're going to see something like that. You do a horseshoe kind of thing, mm. half it, that's 10,000 seats, and that yeah. way, if, if you don't get that many, it doesn't look as empty, right? Because yeah. you're not showing the whole stadium. I mean, it, it, we're not there yet. So the number we're, is a lie. I hope eventually we can get there for all the esports, right? Like, I want it to, I, I think 
Esports would be great. To, I'd love to be able to go on a weekend and be like, what am I doing this weekend? Oh, nothing. I'm just, you know, I may as well go watch, you know, a Toronto play, mm -hmm. you know, Overwatch or, or any other esport, right? Yeah. Like, go watch your local team play. I think that would be really fun. I want to get there. I just, I, don't, I just don't think they're there yet. I know, it's That's really ambitious. way too many. Uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully, they at least fill half of the stadium. We'll see. Maybe we'll I make mean, a trip out there, Brody. For esports, I hope so. Oh, yeah. We're Let's go. There. Why not? Okay, okay, you're paying? No. All right. <laughs> uh, over in the business world, GameStop is planning some big renovations. Facing declining sales and a stock price that is cratering, GameStop wants you to keep coming back, which to them means, and I'm quoting them here, offering competitive sessions in homegrown e-leagues, finding new ways to let customers try games before they buy them, and creating new stores focused solely on retro games. Uh, GameStop has been having a lot of issues yeah. recently. I think they've like reportedly lost 600 plus million dollars in their yeah. last fiscal year. Do you think these new changes will have a positive impact? <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's really good that they're changing. Okay, yes. so we already know that GameStop has a lot of issues. Uh, we know that they don't very uh, treat your trade-ins very well. Like they're, <laughs> but this is why because they need to make money. So I understand yeah. it from the business side. They've already made a lot of changes. When like you go into an EB Games or a GameStop now, oh my God, it's it's just like. Uh, um, another hot topic at this mm -hmm. point, right? The, the games are kind of secondary. The first thing you see is, is a bunch of video game merch. You got yeah. wallets, you got shirts, you got plushies, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I, the last time I went into a GameStop, I went in and I just bought the little Rocket League pullback <laughs> carts, right? Like I didn't buy a video <laughs> game when I was there. So yeah. it, they've already tried to make these changes uh, because those sell more, those pop figures in yes. that. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to have just retro stores. That's a huge thing. I know a lot of mom and pop shops, although this is gonna hurt those mom and pop shops, right? Because they specialize in the retro. Right. Um, but th those are a good industry right now. Like a lot of people are are going back. They have uh, disposable income. Mm -hmm. They wanna go back and, and live their you know childhood memories. So they're yeah. buying their, their Nesses, their Genesis, and all yeah, that it's stuff. So, back. yeah, yeah. So, it, I, I'll be. We'll see if it works because GameStop doesn't have the best, you know, br brand to them now. A lot of people are kind of jaded to them. Yes. But they do need to make changes. So I think it's good that they're making changes. Yeah, Sorry, I think my favorite part. It's okay. I think my favorite part of the story was the fact that they want to let people try games before they buy them because I think that's the most appealing to me. When I'm looking for a new game to play, I don't want to invest sixty bucks into a game that I might not even like, right? So yeah. if I can just, if I'm at the mall. <laughs> see a GameStop and the game that I'm interested in is like there to play for, I don't know, 30 minutes, whatever. Yeah. That's great. Like that is actually great. The thing that triggers great. me the most, what? I'm sorry, I have to use the E-Leagues. E did they really <laughs> hype in it or is that just e in our script? Is no, it, no, no, are no, they that's, actually that's, doing a, a, a lowercase E so. hyphen uppercase L? I think so. I'm, uh, I, that just makes me that? hate them. I'm actually really triggered are you when I saw that. Yeah, boycotted. Why? No, yeah. no, it's not, because I still might need some more pullback answers. <laughs> Anyways, for our last story, we're taking a look at Shroud. The popular streamer said recently that going pro in Fortnite is easy money. Shroud said that even if you lose, you win, and that Epic's huge $100 million prize pool makes it attractive to compete in uh, if you just want to make some easy cash. Now, Lisa, do you agree with this sentiment? Do you think uh, he's you know, just pooping on, on Fortnite? No. Just because it's cooler. I actually don't think he's legitimate? pooping on it at all. I think he's just making the fact is that, you know, you can get last place in one of those events or those tournaments and you can still walk away with hundreds of thousands well, of dollars. Isn't it like you just make it to that yeah, final exactly. so you make like $50,000? Exactly. I mean, it's the combination of, you know, this eSport, Epic wants to put a lot of money into it and a lot mm -hmm. of people, there's like the player base isn't as maybe big as at the moment, like CSGO. Like top tier players isn't as big. The pro scene isn't as big. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for someone who's pretty good at the game to just walk in and make easy money, you know? Yeah. But I, I don't think he's actually throwing shade. I think it's just the fact. They have lots of money to burn Epic Games, yeah. and it's going to fly. No, that, 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 you can't. Just Shroud it. is one of those guys that when he says something controversial, it's, it's just, really not that no. controversial because it's true. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. It's, it, I can't. It's too, it is too easy though. Like it almost takes away from the the comp competitiveness of it. It's like what am I what am I actually playing for? Are you gonna get the best play out of people? Because like sure they want more money, but if you're already guaranteed bank, it's like you're probably gonna try a little bit less. You're like what? Well, I don't even have to try right now. I'm gonna make a lot of no money. Way. So I feel like you can take no away no, no, from no, no, how no. much people money try Money talks. Hard. If you can make a hundred thousand dollars, but you can also make two hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> are you not gonna try your hardest to make the two hundred? It's like they're always gonna want more money. That's the thing with money, right? You always want more. Maybe so. maybe I'm just. Lazy, I'd be like, I got a hundred thousand dollars now. If I win, I win. But that, that's Brody. Everyone was wondering where you were the last couple of days. It's because he prioritizes his own time over I, working and making money. I was money. practicing for Fortnite. Oh, yeah, okay. I gotta make that easy money. You're gonna have to take a whole month off, buddy. If yeah, you that, get <laughs> it, it's not that easy money, yeah. as in yeah. you still have to know how to build. Um, and I 
I don't, whenever I did actually play Fortnite, I didn't build a single, I think I did one <laughs> ramp or something. And yeah. then I drove a golf cart off it. And that was, that was the extent of it. I think he's missing the point of the game there. No, I was having fun, around. and it's all about having fun, Lisa. Missing the point of the game. Rip Brody's Fortnite Pro career. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Next time. It's time to check in with the streamers in Clip It. Our first clip comes from Twitch's favorite degenerate, Mitch Jones, and his attempt at buying flowers. This is how people react in public. Like, you guys just don't know because you never go outside. I know exactly what I'm doing, okay? Like, you see these flowers? I'm going to buy some of these for my soon-to-be girlfriend that I'll never have. And it's going to be fantastic. Okay, I, I didn't break anything. I did not break anything. I just, I just spilled some flowers. It's fine. Well, now he is buying them. Did he just punch flowers over? Uh, this is why it's hard to stream and, you know, live life. Did, and life. this is exactly why you should not be driving and having your phone yes. pointed at you look at reading chat. Yeah. That is yeah. an, a pure example. You can't even flower and, and, and stream, let alone, like, driving and streaming. What a fail. Who was he buying those flowers for? I missed well, that. Well, nobody. He nobody. Said, oh. It's his soon-to-be, never-existing girlfriend. What the Which heck? at least he's aware of that. Hold on, why were there vases in that? Like, do people sell flowers in vases? Vases? Do you so. say vases or vases? Was that Walmart? Pro it Walmart? says everything. Wa I'm very Walmart confused. has everything you need, That's true. especially in America. Oh, is yeah. that not Target? Huh? Oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, know anything about flowers. <laughs> Let's move on. Our next clip comes from Moon Moon, who's still killing it at Mario Maker 2. 99.99% impossible? Wow. That's pretty impossible, dude. <laughs> Well, sh dude, you know, would that were, it were not so difficult to beat this level? Oh, no. Wait, what? What? What just happened? Get you baited. Get you baited. That's how you so lose? The big, the big thing. Yeah, the big thing is that like a lot of hard levels will put in cheats because you have to beat a level to be able to publish it, right? Uh -huh. So a lot of them are putting in invisible blocks that they'll use to skip levels. Essentially, um, the designers are doing that so that they can beat it and publish it. Uh -huh. So that's that was meta level designing. I gotta say, he's like, there's got to be a way to skip this. So he thought he found the skip. No, the person who designed it already had that. He knew that in... you'd be looking for that. Oh my I just God. made you die right over. That was actually genius. Dude, I that like game the meta insane. level. Yesterday, even we saw one where there were just like flying, flaming balls everywhere. That looked impossible. And you to got succeed. yeah. Like, and you got to beat it to publish it. You can't just wow. make head levels for the sake of that was that was meta level. I'm I never approve. playing that game or any of those design levels. <laughs> oh, you uh, think? <laughs> no, no, thank you. Uh, let's move on. It's truly the best time of the day when we troll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things pros bless us from their timelines. Honestly, it doesn't take much to ruin a day. A close run in while you're on your way to work or losing your credit card. But for Caster Phenomenal, it takes something special. I'd rather a hole in a condom than my Capri Sun. This Lunchable is ruined. <laughs> Wow! Priority. This man's got his priorities Yo, straight for sure. Like real, t real talk though. Don't try no, don't to, real talk to, this. Trying to, you know, trying to get that straw in a Capri Sun is like one of the worst. It's, I'd rather like play Dark Souls blindfolded. Like it's, it is one of the most difficult tasks a human can ever encounter in life. Brody, if you get a hole in your condom, you're gonna have to buy a lot more Lunchables in oh, the future uh, down the line. I, I'm, I'm eating all the Lunchables. <gasps> Not kid for your can, kid? Kid can work for your Lunchables. Oh my God! Honestly, as a kid, the Lunchables were my favorite. Like, if I came to school with a Lunchable, I was feeling great. So, uh, <laughs> is it bad that I, I still, still eat Lunchables? Like, I, actually, you know what's fantastic? <laughs> is some stores now have adult Lunchables. They're like gourmet no. gourmet meats and cheeses. What? Send and then me. And then the little toast crackers. I'm not yeah. surprised he eats those for breakfast. He comes in. I eat those any <laughs> time of day. Lunchables. You're never old enough for Lunchables. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> we know the workers at Starbucks always get the names wrong, but Smash Pro Larry Lur had a whole new level of experience. An employee at my local Starbucks just called me Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> I want to restart my day over. Oh what? no! I, see, I, I want to get, I, I don't go to Starbucks, so I can't ever do this, but mm -hmm. you ever give him, I know a guy that gives people a fake name because yeah. his name's really difficult. Yeah. So he just says, nah, my name's Tim. What's his just, real name? You're gonna call him out? Uh, I, I actually forget who you it was. Don't know <laughs> I, but 
They just know. You're like, I just call him Tim. I forget who it was that, that oh did it. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, have you ever given to you, I guess Lisa's no, pretty okay, Lisa's enough. very generic. Um, however, I have given a fake name just to try it. I once gave Beyonce, and they didn't even blink. They're just like, yeah, cool. Like, they are so used to it, probably. Yeah. They, they, they don't get paid enough to actually <laughs> care about their job. People told me it's actually a point of marketing that they mess it up on purpose. This is another conspiracy oh, yeah, theory, guys. People, of course, because right? people then Instagram it, put it on their social media. That's and true. And I, I still don't get that. I saw someone the other day, I'm sorry, this is like a little, I saw someone the other day come out of a Starbucks, go near a fountain and take a picture of their cup. And I'm like, what, why? Near a fountain? Who oh. cares about it? It's oh. like, who cares what coffee you're drinking? It's I just basic, don't, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It's a thing. It's just like, hey, I'm just casually hanging out. But it, it doesn't. Starbucks. Nobody cares. <laughs> Are you talking about Marissa? No, no. I'm sure she's done that, <laughs> I'm too. I'm sure she's done that. I'm sure she's done that. All right. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, special delivery. Here's your daily dosage of cuteness thanks to Overwatch Pro, Sabi Obi. He captioned it, hello, imagine this little guy showing up your door to hand you your package. Oh my ah! god, the doge, the doge. <laughs> Classic doge, like actual doge, like that is the cutest thing. I am like angry how cute it is. I, I would absolutely, and they're probably going to handle the package a lot better than half those employees do too. <laughs> Just oh whipping it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll actually bring it up, drop it off nicely, not damage your package. <laughs> you know, I, I'm totally down for uh, Amazon, UPS, all of them yeah. employing a bunch of puppers now to Work bring dogs. packages. I'll pay, I will pay the extra fee. If there's like a, a $50 fee <laughs> on top for my delivery just to have a pupper bring it up to me, you and do I get. It? I get pets though. Yeah. As long as I, as long pet. as I get a, a, a pet, a couple scritches behind the ears, <laughs> I'm paying the fee. New beautiful idea. Why hasn't anyone ever thought about this? Well, they better now. You know. <laughs> Let's move on because it is time to get to some crowd control. Let's start off with a tour of the office. Literally, Mojo Swap Tops remade the Dunder, Dunder Mifflin office in Far Cry 5 engine. <laughs> We have to, th the attention to detail there too is great. Like the spot, uh, spilled. <laughs> uh, the spilled chili too, the pot of spilled chili in the middle. He, uh, if you actually go to the, the rest of the video, uh, goes through all the other rooms and everything yeah. too. It just, uh, I think people forget how amazing, I've seen so many cool creations now in the Far Cry 5 engine, mm -hmm. uh, like the level map yeah. editor. It's, uh, people are putting some time in, like you know how much time that would have taken to, to put together, like I'm no, not that dedicated, Jesus. Uh, is this a bad time to say I've never really gone into the office? Like I know the office is like a huge pop culture thing, but I've never, like I watched you two episodes. You never watched The Office? I watched like, two yeah, episodes. I, I gotta say like I'm not, I don't like, I haven't binge watched it, I haven't watched every episode, but like I've You're definitely like, yeah, watched it when it's on. You've <laughs> never, I don't wow. know the chili joke. I don't know. Though you're right though, I've seen another version where someone made the friends like set yeah. in the game, and I, I love that. Like I watch Friends, like that's like one of my favorite Okay, pretend ever. this was that and now appreciate okay, it. Okay, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yes, that's... I'm so impressed. All right, hey Brody. <laughs> yeah. um, I think Aulero from Reddit filmed you on the bus the okay. other day. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, I wonder what he's looking at. Look at you, Brody. Uh, it, just straight up. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's immersion. That is, that is immersion right there. One I'll could dream. That, He's like, he got away from the actual subway to one with more room. <laughs> hey, you know what? Those aren't real people, though. You don't have to deal with the ones in the virtual reality. True. Right? True. Yeah, I used to take the subway and transit a lot. Uh, I enjoyed it, honestly, personally. But you know, every once in a while, you get a crazy guy that yells at you while you're on the bus, and you wish you weren't there. So I totally. You can escape now. Yeah. Now I just got to bring my VR set that someone would so probably rob me I while actually, I'm on the subway. I've, Great idea. I'm bringing my Oculus <laughs> Quest uh, anywhere I go. Like if I go on plane trips now, I haven't really? yet. Yeah, but I've been tempted to just bust it out on the plane and watch some like anime in a big movie theater in there. I'm like, I, I feel like I have to, eventually we're gonna get there. I, ha I feel, I'm gonna have to be it. those guys to push the limits and make it a norm that VR in public is okay. You should do it, just expect someone to then film you while you're doing it behind the back being like, look at this guy. I know. With his and, VR. And, and, oh, and I'll turn the cameras, the inside out cameras on so I can actually see him and I'll wave back. Oh, that's freaky. Yeah, I'm watching you. <laughs> Eventually, we'll get to that perfect world. <laughs> Anyways, our last post makes me want to curl up with some hot chocolate. Retro Recon Fig inspires me with his setup. All right, let's see this. So I, I love my, I've been, I put so much time and effort into my setup at uh -huh. home. This though is clean, and yeah. I have to respect it. Wait, is this Three kind setups. of like a millionaire? <laughs> 
Yeah, one of the comments was, this guy puts more effort into his setup than I do in my entire life. Yeah. Like, the, the, it was an incredible setup. The amount of consoles he has, I'm just jealous of. Like, I thought my collection was pretty good, but that that was absolutely But you gotta beautiful. expect this guy to be like one of those, like, take off your shoes before you come in, wash your hands before you touch <laughs> that. Don't even touch it. Like, he's gonna be one of those, like, anal guys. I, I don't know, in the con, because I was OCD. going through the comments. Uh, the dude's actually uh, from Canada, from Thunder Bay, and he's like, uh, yeah, anybody wants to come over, just bring a twofer and uh, some pizza, and, and and we'll chill out. It's got I, three setups. You can have some sick land parties. I guess we're going to I'm Thunder in, Bay. We're going baby. to Thunder Bay. Screw Vancouver. We're going to Thunder Bay now. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, we plan our trip to Thunder Bay. That's it for Unmuted. Remember, you can always hit us up on all our socials just to say hi or send us stuff to react to. Follow us at Squad State. We'll see you next time.